Well, good morning, Danny and Wanda, back from Pecan Grove. And guys, here is where we're at with this new structure that we're putting up. Uh, I'm kind of keeping it in theme with the old tradition. I had uh, uh, I had uh, Jesse, our son over here, uh, helping with Chris to peel. Me and Chris went in the woods and cut these trees down. Uh, went and brought them up here. Mr. Jesse showed up, him and his wife, Patty. And Chris and Jesse peeled them. They'd never peeled trees with a pole peeler before. Which was fun to watch. That was a new experience for both of them. Uh, I had a pole peeler from years ago when we used to peel trees. And uh, they got to do the experience of peeling the pine trees and notching them to fit over the edges like this uh, on top of it here. And showing them how we fasten them down from the tops with big spikes and stuff. That was the reason for putting up the big giant timbers up here on the top is so I'd have something to nail those big spikes into. And uh, I didn't get any film of that because Patty and I were doing other things. Yeah, you and Patty were doing other things. Plus, you and your daughter were visiting the day that I put the post up in the beach. Yeah, Amy was here. Kind of stuff. Amy was here, and we didn't get a chance to do any videoing on that. But that was not important, really. Uh, but guys... Me and Mr. Chris and uh, Jesse, we sit and we talk about a lot of things because of what this building is going to be. This building is going to serve multiple functions because Wanda and I have decided there's no sense in building an individual building for each thing that we want to do. We might as well utilize the buildings and make them do several different things. The main function of this building is a, is a, is a two-fold thing. One is the sugar cane is right yonder. And we're trying to keep everything within close proximity of everything. And we're creating a small village here. I mean, a homestead. We, it's a homestead. We've got our high tunnel right next door here. Now, there's a reason why I'm doing all this. Uh, the prepper shack is right there. The shop is right there. The sugar cane is right there. Uh, the, the garden power, is right there. The, one of the 60-foot uh, raised bed garden is down yonder. The power supply is right on the other side of my truck here. So, and we have water right here. Uh, the pump house is right behind this wonder right yonder. We have the pump house right there. So, this is the way things will work for us. Uh, we're going to be making our syrup right here. And we've already planted some trees here. Like this pear tree is right here. We have our uh, hazelnuts are planted here and there. We have a big giant pine tree right here. And we've got other pines around us right here. We're trying to, as these trees grow up, this will be kind of like in the woods, basically. And we want the shadedness for it and everything. That's thus the evergreen right here. Now, we're probably, we're still in process of figuring out how we're going to lay it out, but I'm pretty much got it down pat, I believe. We're probably going to put the syrup cooking pan, which I have ordered. The new evaporator pan should be here. We're going to build a furnace right here on this end. And this wall right here, all the way across to this side and down to this side will be closed off because the north wind comes from this direction right here. And when you're, the last thing you want when you're cooking syrup is the north wind blowing on you. Now you want it to be cold, but you don't want it to be blowing on you because it will blow the fire out and your syrup rises and falls and it makes dregs get in the syrup that you can't get out of it. So that's the reason for closing off this wall and this wall. Now. My plan is if me and Mr. Tim can make the cane mill come together like we're thinking that we can, then I'm going to bring two, I have two giant lighter posts, the real big around, and I'll be putting them out here at some distance, I'm not 100% sure just yet, and I'll be extending the roof right here on over to cover up, we're going to mount the cane mill right here if we can use the PTO on the tractor to actually run this thing where I don't have to have a pole turning around and around. The cane mill will be underneath a covered roof here which will make it more protected. We won't have to have it sitting out in the opening like it is now. 
and will give us a place to we'll be able to bring our cane right here and well actually the cane will come around on this side of it well let me get it backwards it has to turn in the opposite direction the cane will come on this side over here the tractor will sit down here and the squeezins will go out on this side which we'll be able to take out with the ranger or the we'll put the tractor with the bucket because I have two tractors we'll put the bucket to catch the squeezins from and we can actually guys this is our plan as we get older we don't want to have to be standing up feeding a cane mill going around and around with a pole and we don't have to be driving around in circles we want to be able to sit down in a chair pick the cane up and feed it into the mill that makes it a lot more comfortable for us as we get older it makes this process a lot easier and then as we drain the juice off of it the mill uh, will be sitting while the cooking system will be sitting right here and we'll be able to just transfer it right here now the evaporator pan I have coming is you'll have to see this one to believe it it's really nice now the other part me and mr. Chris talks about we like you know we harvest a couple of deer every year off the property and last year was a little bit hard to hang them up and clean them because we had nowhere really to do it so what we want to do is we put a big beam right over the center of this here a big log and I have some big eye bolts that we're going to drill a hole through that and put a nut on top of it and we're going to put an eye bolt up there and I have my winch that's over at deep south my boat winch that we want to mount right here that we can hoist the animals up and down with so that we can actually use this to skin our animals and we'll be out of the uh, out of the weather because we'll have two sides on it here keeping the cold off of us I actually have a large cast iron sink that was on the property when I bought it that we want to mount probably on one of these walls right here either here or here more than likely it will be over here because I have another function guys that I want to use this thing for uh, I have a smokehouse at Deep South Homestead and I don't have a smokehouse at Pecan Grove so what I would like to do is to be able to maybe come in this corner right here somewhere and build me a small smokehouse in here to hang my meat in with a, with a pipe going out the back of it right here so that we can actually smoke the meat in here also now I don't know that that's going to happen that may not be feasible I haven't got that 100% in the design yet don't know that is in the making if it is this will be a threefold instead of a twofold building you know making syrup is a once or twice thing you do in the fall uh, skinning a deer is something you only do in the cold weather of the year smoking meat is something that you only do in the cold time of the year other than that the building just sits here so our thinking is with the high tunnel right here with gardening and all that kind of stuff and we'll have a sink right here to wash vegetables in is we may bring a couple of our big rocking chairs and put in here once we get the floor down in this thing and we might just use this as an old-fashioned homestead gazebo type situation where we just sit out here I may even get some really rustic ceiling fans that's made for outdoors and mount them from these poles up here and have some ceiling fans turning in here in the summertime so that we can enjoy the cool air in the summertime we also have a chimney from over at Deep South Homestead that I could set up right out here and, and we could use the chimney to keep the mosquitoes away at night or in the evenings we also have my dad's our Y2K cooker here that he made out of a big rim off of a giant piece of equipment you know we can cook on this thing here we can set this up for like a place to grill out here uh, we're trying to get everything set up to where we can just sit down chill out have a good time that's why I'm busting my tail right now trying to make all this happen as fast as I can okay guys before I get out of here challenge for each and every one of you guys okay but actually it's a multifunctional shack uh, it, you know sugar cooking the syrup you know smoking meat butchering the animals I'm gonna leave this challenge up to you guys 
I want y'all to come up with a name for this. Uh, it's going to be rustic. So come up with a name for it. Give me some ideas in the, in the comments down below. And we may choose one of them. And if we do, we might even have a sign made that says that. And, and we, we might send them a jar of syrup after might, we make I might just send you a jar of syrup if I choose So y'all make some good know. names. If we come up with some really, really good names. Well, here we are back. It's another day. And uh, it's day, well, today's the 10th. Two days before the storm's supposed to get here, Miss Francine's supposed to pay us a little bit of visit just west of us here. We're going to, I stopped the work on the building uh, because I'd rather it just be open and not have anything the wind can get a hold to or anything like that until I get completely finished with it. But I did make another advancement here. We uh, had this old sink that was on the property here. We found it uh, in a pile of stuff. And I've got it mounted to the wall back here. I went and bought a new basket, you know, to change out this old basket in the bottom with here. We got to do some cleaning up on it. I was going to wait till after the storm system comes through. And you know what? I may even just refinish it out here because once I get the roof on this thing, I might come in here and just sand this whole thing down and just refinish it and uh, make it all look new again. But the challenge is going to be... Uh, you know getting some getting some water in it here because it's just right there's a wall right there uh, I'll probably have to do it with PEX but I, what I want to do is because uh, we're only going to use this building very rarely in the winter time mainly probably hardly ever use it in the summer except for washing vegetables I'm probably going to buy me a hose that is a camper hose that's water uh, so you know safe water hose and I'm going to put me a PEX fitting, I think, down there coming out the wall on the back so that I can hook it into the high tunnel here because i got a freeze-proof faucets right there. I can run that hose out here and just hook it up, and we can just use it that way instead of me trying to run all the plumbing down and everything. Now, I am a little concerned. When I hung this sink, it's so heavy. I had to build the hangers to go on the back of it because I went to town, went to the hardware store, and I looked at the hangers they make for these things. And I told him, I said, uh, I don't think that's going to work. I said, this is a big sink. And he said, well, that's what they make for the laboratories, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I come home and replicated my own hangers out of quarter-inch thick plate steel. And I lag-bolted them to this board on the wall back here, and I hung the sink on it. It pulled all the lag bolts out of it. It was so heavy. So I was like, okay, that's not going to work. So I went back to the drawing board, and I got galvanized carriage bolts out of the shop out here. And I bolted the brackets on with galvanized carriage bolts so from the outside coming in, well, it's it's here now. Now, what I'm probably still going to do, you know me, because I just don't trust it. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put some braces down to that bottom wall down yonder just because. I just, I got to have that assurance because this thing is so heavy. If it fell off on your foot, it'd just break your foot, you know. So, I want to try to get that done. But, now... Because this is a syrup building and a skinning shed for the deer, and I may make a smoker house out of it. I mean, I don't even know what all I'm going to do here yet. Washing vegetables. We're trying to make this thing work for us. I actually have gotten one of the products in to use in the building here, and we're going to go out to the shop, and we're going to take a look at it. Okay, guys, we're back out in the shop. This is the new uh, syrup vat we got in. I ordered from Bavor a... Uh, nine and a half inch deep, four foot long, two feet wide. Uh, this is actually called a maple syrup pan, but I decided, you know what? I don't cook a lot of cane syrup anymore. This thing holds 47 gallons. We don't hardly ever cook 47 gallons anymore. I decided to get the one that had the, the vat on top up here. This is the holding vat. You, uh... Put your juice in. As this cooks, it warms the juice here so you're not putting cold juice back into your uh, cooking juice that you have down here to turn into syrup because that's, that's where you get your crystallization. You see people throwing juice way up in the air like this. All you're doing is crystallizing it because that's how sugar's made. And I don't do that. Now, I may pick it up and test it but I'm right here above it. It's, I don't bring it way up here in the cold air up here. I stay down here where it's warm at. 
And uh, this thing, now we have a series of valves that came with this thing. Uh, there is a ball valve that goes right up here for, you can turn it on and off for pouring the juice in the pan. We have a ball valve that goes over here, a three quarter inch one for pouring the uh, syrup out of the pan. We have a thermometer. This is what I loved about it. Now that we have a thermometer that goes in here that tells me the temperature of the syrup just off the bottom of the pan right in here. That way I can look at this and when I get to, you know, my 227 or, or 228, wherever I'm gonna cook it to, I automatically know it's time to shut that fire down and start pulling the syrup off. Now it has a metal divider in it. I've done some research on this because it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Because at first I said, well, that's an evaporator. It's got to come all the way around the end. But I, the research I've done on it showed that it doesn't, doesn't go to the bottom. What I like about it, this is a stiffener. Some of the research I've done on these pans was if you get a big pan like this, that the sides are not really sturdy on them, you know? So you, they put this divider in the middle of it here to help uh, with the stiffness of it. Now this right here is, it, it comes off, it comes, it comes off of it. There's holes, I haven't bolted it. For it, easy wash and stuff like that, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I can take it off. I, I may not even, to be honest with you, I may not even bolt it. I might just, I might just leave it sitting on there because when it comes time to clean everything up, it'd be a whole lot easier for me just to take that thing off to clean it. Cause it's, all you're doing is putting juice in it, not knocking it off or anything like that. Guys, I have a 14 foot evaporator stainless steel pan that can cook a hundred gallons of syrup at a time. You know, I don't need that anymore. I have, I, what, I, my, what my plan was, was I was going to try to trade somebody that evaporator pan. If they would just build me a, you know, a stainless one. I was going to give them that several thousand dollar pan just for one I could cook like this in. But you know what? I couldn't find anybody who was willing to just trade. And uh, even the people who have sheet metal shops, I thought maybe they might be somebody who would trade me, but nobody contacted me back or anything like that. So I went online. This is where Baybor is not sponsoring us or anything like that. I just went online, looked for what I wanted, uh, found it and I just purchased it outright. It's not, I think I paid, don't quote me on this, but I think it was around $300 or something like that. And everywhere I contacted about building me a pan, a, a sheet metal shop, you know, they want a thousand dollars. And I, when I found this one, and this is food grade stainless steel, and it's probably from across the water, you know, from the big sea over yonder. But if it works, it works. I don't care. Now, there was a few reviews on it that said, people said, well, mine leaked or whatever. And guys, I grew up in the old-fashioned way of making cane syrup. If you had a pan back, I mean, back in the day when I was younger, when we cooked syrup, if you had a pan that did a little bit of leaking, you filled it up with water the day before to check it. And if it was leaking anywhere, you just throw some cornmeal around in it. And that cornmeal would go to them leaks and find it and stop it up. It's kind of like, you know how, remember when we had the old radiators that you put the old stop leak in, you know, when you had a problem? Uh, younger generation probably don't know nothing about that. But uh, back in the day, we would put stop leak in something to stop the leaks. If you had a cracked block, because the block froze and cracked, you didn't have any antifreeze in it. I mean, they had stuff that you could put in there that would seal the block up where you could still use the motor. You know I mean? Today... We don't have nothing like that today. These little engines today don't even work like that. So, I mean, the old ways have just slipped away from us, and they are no more. But I didn't worry about the reviews about it having a pinhole in it somewhere. That's a, that's a, that's a very simple fix, you know. But people were yet, they were complaining about it. Uh, that's nothing to complain about. All the old ones leaked. I guess one of the blessings that uh, comes along with... Uh, having purchased the property here is that when we purchased it, there was a huge pile of just old bricks piled up on the property here. Uh, we haven't shown y'all. In the barn. We don't, we know these, these weren't in the barn. These, oh. well, they were in the barn. I yeah, guess. they were, all were in the barn. All of them were in the barn, but we've only showed y'all half of the bricks that we have. We have stacked the ones that went with the house or step or, uh, are separated out because they're a particular brick. But then there's just 
hundreds and hundreds and thousands of other bricks that we have stacked out on pallets in another place that I kept thinking, what am I going to do with all these bricks? But now I'm sitting here going, I got a brick of furnace for this thing to sit under here, which is no big deal. I mean, I've laid bricks my whole life. Uh, I'll lay me a furnace here. The only thing I got to figure out is the, you know, the stack to go up the back. I've got a, I've got an old culvert over at Deep South. I may use a culvert. I might just go buy some black iron pipe and put in it. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. It, I may brick it all the way up. I don't know. Uh, it's one of them things we'll, we'll just figure it out when we get there. But, uh, but we'll be bricking a furnace out of this, you know, for this underneath the building over here. Uh, we have a gentleman right now welding me together a clutch system to go on top of my cane mill. Mr. Tim built me a thing right here. I don't know if we've showed this. Mr. Tim uh, built me this right here. And we set it on here. It fits the uh, cane mill. fits my uh, PTO post hole uh, digger on my tractor perfectly. It spins it just a little too fast. And it's in the opposite direction that the cane mill is running right now. So I actually have to take the top off the mill, swap, swap these two rollers around, which that can be done, and move this to the other side so that you can feed it from the other side. Because one turns counterclockwise, one turns clockwise. But having realized that it turns just a little too fast, rather than going... And building a ton of pulleys right now. I mean, I'll probably do that in the future. But right now, I've got to get this thing ready to make syrup. I had an old hay baler that I had bought a couple of years back that had a slip clutch on the front of it. So I took the slip clutch off. I took another receiver hitch, another piece of pipe, and I took it to a friend of mine, Mr. Cameron, that's a welder. And he is welding all that together for me right now. We're going to bring it back and we're going to adjust the slip clutch so that as this thing's turning, if we get too much cane in it and it's before it'll bust the cast iron on the mill or break a tooth off on the mill or something like that, the clutch on it will slip. Uh, that's kind of what we're... Uh, or, you know, if a, some kind of accident happens or something like that, the clutch will slip on it and it won't just keep pulling something into it or whatever. I'm trying to take safety, as much safety precaution as I can on it. And once we get that one back from him, me and Mr. Tim is working on a, on a big pulley system with a small pulley system hooked up in a way that we can really slow this thing down, you know, to where we can operate it like we need to operate it. But um, in a crunch, you gotta do what you gotta do. Thank you guys from Pecan Grove.